In previous videos, we saw that we can derive all our intervals from the harmonic series. It provides us with the true or just interval ratios for each interval. And we saw that the most consonant interval, the second harmonic, is that of an octave, which has a frequency ratio of 2 to 1. For example, if our note has a frequency of 110 Hz, then the note an octave higher will be 220 Hz. These two notes are so consonant that they actually sound like the same note, which is why we give them the same name. In this case, the name A. The purpose of a tuning system is to define a fixed set of notes at specific frequencies between this octave range that can be used to create music. Ideally, we don't want too many notes. If we subdivided the octave into, say, 200 notes, it would be difficult to use. And because the notes would be so close together, two adjacent notes would sound almost identical but we also don't want too few notes. If we subdivided the octave into, say, three notes, the music we could create would be pretty boring. For historical and mathematical reasons, we've landed on having 12 notes per octave. Additionally, we want the tuning system to be consonant and consistent. This means that we want the notes to create consonant intervals with each other meaning that they should generally adhere to the interval ratios found in the harmonic series. And we want the tuning system to be internally consistent. We will see what this means soon. So spoiler, this is actually impossible. Every tuning system must be either inconsistent or dissonant. The first formal tuning system ever created was Pythagorean tuning. As the name implies, this was created by Pythagoras. Yep, the triangle guy. And it works as follows. After the octave, the next strongest interval is that of a perfect fifth. This is the third harmonic and has a frequency ratio of 3 to 2. So a tuning system based on the interval of a perfect fifth should be harmonically very strong, as it uses a consonant interval to tune each note. So as a quick recap, the perfect octave interval ratio is 2 to 1, and the perfect fifth interval ratio is 3 to 2. Now it's very easy to find these harmonics on a guitar. The second harmonic is located above the 12th fret, and this creates an octave interval with the open string. And the third harmonic is located around the 7th fret, and this creates a perfect 5th interval with the open string. Though an octave higher, so technically a perfect 12th. So if we take any note, we can find the note exactly a perfect 5th above it by playing the 3rd harmonic. We can then take this new note and find another note a fifth above that one, and so on. Now you may recognize this as the circle of fifths. And everybody knows if you go around the circle of fifths 12 times, you get back to your original note. So let's try this. Now remember that to find a note above your reference note, you multiply by the interval ratio, and to find a note below your reference note, you divide by the interval ratio. So to find the note a perfect fifth above, we multiply by three on two. To find the note an octave above, we multiply by two on one. To find the note a fifth below, we divide by three on two, and to find the note an octave below, we divide by two on one. So let's start with a hypothetical note C at 100 Hertz just for simplicity, and calculate the frequency of each note in the circle of fifths until we get back to the start. Now we want all the notes to fit within a single octave range, so between 100 and 200 hertz. This will require us to multiply by 3 on 2 to find the next note a perfect fifth higher, and occasionally divide by 2 on 1 to bring the note back down into our octave range. 
Now here's a table where I've done exactly this. And suddenly we see a problem. We know that an octave has a ratio of 2 on 1. So if our original note is 100 Hz, an octave above should be at 200 Hz. But we find that we have actually reached 202.7 Hz, slightly more than an octave. Expressed mathematically, this just shows that 3 on 2 to the power of 12 does not equal 2 on 1 to the power of 7. Or in English, 12 fifths do not make 7 octaves. So the circle of fifths is broken. If we go all the way through the circle of fifths, we do not return to the same note. Everything you thought you knew is a lie. And the difference between the two octave frequencies is called the Pythagorean comma. This is the small amount of overlap at the end of the circle of fifths. Mathematically, the Pythagorean comma has a ratio of 531,441 to 524,288. And this is the reason you can't tune a piano. Before electric tuners, pianos were tuned by ear. You would tune a single note using a tuning fork, then tune up and down by octaves and fifths until you covered every note. But as we now see, the further away you move from your starting point, the more out of tune you get. And every tuning system that came after this Pythagorean system tried to overcome this Pythagorean comma problem in different ways. So we see that Pythagorean tuning is not internally consistent. We expected to go around the circle of fifths and return to the same note, but we didn't. This tuning system has already broken one of our requirements. But nor is it consonant. When we compare the intervals of the major scale created using Pythagorean tuning with the just intervals we find in the harmonic series, we find a number of discrepancies. The major third, for example, should be 5 over 4 according to the harmonic series. But when we use Pythagorean tuning, we actually get an interval ratio of 81 to 64. Similarly, the major sixth should be 5 over 3 according to the harmonic series, but instead we get 27 over 16. And the major seventh should be 15 over 8, but instead we get 243 over 128. So Pythagorean tuning is neither consistent nor consonant. So Pythagorean tuning preferences the interval of a perfect fifth. This tuning system results in perfectly consonant fifths and fourths, which is the inverse of a fifth, to the detriment of thirds and sixths, which are quite out of tune. And the difference between the Pythagorean major third and a true or just major third, according to the harmonic series, is 81 to 80. And this is called the syntonic comma. And we find the same ratio when we combine the just and the Pythagorean minor third. Now, early in the history of music in antiquity, unisons, octaves, and perfect fifths were commonly used to harmonize melodies. But in the Middle Ages, as music developed and matured, thirds and sixths became more important as harmonizations. As we know, today thirds are the building blocks of chords, not fifths. So musicians needed a new tuning system which prioritized consonant sounding thirds rather than fifths. And this is what mean tone tuning does. Or more specifically, quarter comma mean tone tuning. A mean tone temperament is a system of tuning which seeks to close the overlap in the circle of fifths found in Pythagorean tuning by reducing the size of the fifths. So say we want perfectly consonant major thirds. We know that the true major third differs from the Pythagorean major third by the syntonic comma of 81 over 80. We also know that it takes us four steps around the circle of fifths to get to the major third. So for example, from C to G, G to D, D to A, and A to E. So if we reduce the size of each step 
by a quarter of the syntonic comma, then the major third interval, C to E, will be a true harmonic major third. The resultant tuning is called quarter comma mean tone tuning. Now, this isn't important, but for those of you who are math nerds, because pitch is a logarithmic scale, the way we get a quarter is by taking the syntonic comma to the power of a quarter. So we take the Pythagorean tuning and we adjust each step by a quarter comma. So as you can see, the major third ratio between C and E is now a true major third. Excellent. But this has come at the expense of having dissonant fifths and fourths. The other problem with this method is that it overcorrects the full circle of fifths. Every four steps through the circle of fifths are reduced by the syntonic comma. So over a full cycle of 12 fifths, the root note an octave higher is reduced by three syntonic commas. Now this means our root note an octave higher is now too low. So we find that the quarter comma mean tone tuning system is not consonant. By definition, the fifths and fourths are reduced from their true ratio and not consistent because again, we did not close the circle of fifths. As we've just seen, Pythagorean and mean tone tuning are not consonant. Their interval ratios do not conform with the true ratios found in the harmonic series. Well, why not just use the ratios found in the harmonic series as our tuning system? This is a tuning system called just intonation. Doing this over a major scale would give you these frequencies. Now, obviously this tuning system is consonant, but is it consistent? Unfortunately, no, it's not. There are a few problems. First, we would expect the interval between the notes C to D and D to E to be the same, right? Both sets of notes are a whole step apart. Unfortunately, this is not the case. As you can see, we actually have two different whole step intervals, adjust major tone and adjust minor tone which isn't ideal. As you would imagine, this would make our scale sound a bit uneven, because now we have two different whole step intervals as well as our semitone interval. And secondly, while all the notes form a consonant interval with the note C, they do not all form consonant intervals with each other. For example, the interval between D and F is a minor third and therefore should be six on five but instead we find it's 32 on 27. And the interval ratio between D and A is a perfect fifth and therefore should be three over two, but instead we find that it's 40 on 27. So God help you if you play a D minor chord. So using the harmonic series as your tuning system doesn't work. It's not consistent. And in fact, it's only consonant from the reference note or the note we initially tune from, not necessarily from all the other notes. Finally, this brings us to equal temperament. While this tuning system has been known since at least the 1500s, it was not widely adopted until about the 19th century. Prior to this, most musicians used some form of mean tone or well-tempered tuning. Equal temperament divides the octave into equal intervals. Again, equal in a logarithmic scale. So if we use 12 notes per octave, then we have 1.06. So again, if we take C equals 100 hertz, we can find all 12 notes in an octave by simply multiplying the previous notes frequency by 1.06. Because using equal intervals to divide the octave in this way will always result in irrational numbers that cannot be simplified into fractions, equal temperament tuning will always be out of tune. And while theoretically we could divide the octave up into any number of notes, 13, 14, 15, whatever, it just so happens that having 12 notes in an octave allows the thirds, fourths, and fifths 
to approximate the true or just thirds, fourths, and fifths. The next value of n that better approximates the true interval ratios is 30, but having 30 notes per octave is a bit much to play comfortably. So all our notes, except for the octave, are now out of tune. But we finally have a way of dividing the notes in an octave up such that the note an octave above any other note is actually double the frequency of that lower note. So it is consistent. With equal temperament tuning, we have sacrificed consonants for consistency. Each interval is now exactly the same ratio from every note, because the notes are all equally spaced. All major thirds are the same distance apart. All perfect fifths are the same distance apart. We only have one size for whole steps and one size for half steps, but they are also all out of tune. Now, here's a quick comparison table between Pythagorean, quarter common mean tone, just and equal temperament tuning for the C major scale. Remember that both Pythagorean and mean tone tuning are both inconsistent and dissonant. Just tuning is consonant, at least from the reference note, but not consistent, and equal temperament is consistent, but not consonant. So you just can't win. So it should hopefully be clear now that any tuning system that uses fixed frequency notes, like a piano, will be a compromise. It's impossible to create a tuning system that both always sounds consonant and is internally consistent. And as we'll see in future videos, the first three tuning systems we covered here sound okay if you stick to a single key the key of the reference note you tuned from. But they get progressively more and more out of tune and inconsistent as you modulate to different keys. Whereas equal temperament, while it's out of tune from the beginning, even in your reference key, it is consistently out of tune for every single key. So to overcome this, you must either create an instrument with an infinite number of notes, which is impractical, never change key, which is boring, or use equal temperament tuning, where all your notes are slightly out of tune, even in your reference key, but consistently out of tune in all keys.